Mashoku Tensei Fun Fact Compilation Parts 1 to 100. Did you know that the Rudius who received this happy ending isn't the original Rudius, but an alternative version? The real main Rudius faces a fate even more horrific than his previous life. It all began with a deceptive message from Hitogami, luring him into a trap. Releasing an infected rat by mistake causes Roxy to fall seriously ill and eventually die. This tragedy marked the beginning of a series of orchestrated events by Hitogami, driving Rudius to madness and misery. Subsequently, Shilfi's death and the departure of other family members, aside from Aisha, left him utterly alone. Eventually, everyone dear to him was gone, including Eris. Driven by misery and grief, Rudius descended into feudal violence. Hidogami's deception shattered his relationships, causing immense suffering and forever changing his life. Seeking redemption, Rudius embarked on a vengeful path, discovering how to defeat Hidogami. But time ran out as he grew old. He then traveled back to his past self, sharing a guilt-ridden diary and vital advice to alter a tragic fate. The course of time travel left him gravely injured. Without essential organs and drained of mana, facing impending death, he imparted his past self with advice and the guilt-ridden diary, preserving his knowledge from being lost. In the beginning, Hitogami had already planned everything to prevent the birth of Rudius and Roxy's child, who would ultimately bring about his downfall. By gaining Rudius's trust, Hitogami managed to crush his life and avoid his undesirable future. In other words, Hitogami is the true villain of Mashoku Tensei. Fun Fact About Mashoku Tensei Part 1 Did you know that in the web novel version, Ariel almost f***ed Shilfi with a d though. In response, Shilfi goes into full panic mode, unleashing her magic skills and nearly kills Ariel. Knowing this, Shilfi quickly heals her. Surprisingly, she doesn't get mad. Instead, it arouses and awakens a masochistic side in her. Unfortunately, this part was omitted in the light novel and never made it to the anime. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 2. Did you know that in Rudia's family, all daughters inherit their mother's eye color, while both of his sons inherit Rudia's distinctive green eyes. In Aris' genetic line, all of her children inherit their mother's hair color. In Shilfi's genetic line, none of her children, including herself, have the same hair color, but at least their ears match. Roxy's genes are so dominant that both of her children strongly resemble their mother. These unique genetic traits add an intriguing aspect to Rudia's family. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 3 Did you know that due to his Laplace factor, Rudius is incapable of using Toki? Rudius struggles to understand how Toki operates, much like his difficulty with understanding healing magic. Consequently, he finds himself unable to harness its power. This limitation can be attributed to the Laplace factor, which also rendered Laplace unable to employ Toki. However, not everyone bearing the Laplace factor is incapable of using it. Luckily, he managed to overcome this weakness with his MK armor. It enables him to turn his mana into physical strength, also granting him greater agility. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 4. Did you know that in the Holy Land of Swords, while the swordsmen excel in their swordsmanship, many of them lack general knowledge. Most of them cannot write or even read, and they tend to be isolated within their territories. This is evident in their failure to recognize the dragon god Orsted when Eris mentions his name. Characters like Gislaine, Mina, and even Eris are perfect examples as they can't read. In conclusion, yes, they are strong, but they're stupid. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 5. Did you know that Tao Hand is immune to a succubus charms? A succubus can release pheromones that repel women and attract men, clouding their judgment and leading them into uncontrollable desire. This manages to affect Paul and Rudius, but not Tao Hand. The reason is because he's gay. He doesn't like females. He likes men. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 6. Did you know that Rudius's kid seed was so strong that he was able to break Rudius's finger when he was just a baby? Sieg is stated to be the strongest child among his siblings. This strength may be attributed to his Laplace factor or some other special quality. On one occasion, Rudius recounted a story to Nana Hoshi about arm wrestling with Sieg. In order to protect his dignity as a father, Rudius wore MK armor and managed to win. Otherwise, his hand would have been destroyed. 
This made Nanahoshi wonder if he was truly protecting his dignity. Did you know that among Rudia's children, Lara Grarit poses the biggest threat and is the most feared by Hitogami? According to Hitogami's prediction, she along with Rudia's descendants would team up with Orsted and kill him in the future. Before that could happen, Hitogami tried several ways to prevent her birth. One of his plans was convincing Rudius to acquire a demon eye, which led him to avoid meeting Roxy in the demon continent. Due to Roxy's involvement, Hitogami also attempted to prevent Rudius from saving Zenith in the teleport labyrinth, hoping to avoid their fate in another encounter. And additionally, he tried to make Roxy seriously ill during her pregnancy with Lara, but Rudius' future self intervened to prevent that from happening. In the end, there's nothing Hitogami could do to prevent Lara from being born. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei, Part 7. Did you know that Rudius felt a sense of being NT art? When Orsted mentioned that Eris was destined to be with Luke in previous loops, Orsted explained that in all previous iterations, Luke continuously pursued Eris starting with irritation but ultimately winning her affection, leading to their relationship. Hearing this, Rudius experienced a strange sense of betrayal, realizing that Luke had taken Eris away from him in those previous iterations. However, upon further reflection, in this current loop, it turned out Rudius was the one who ended up entering slash winning Eris's heart. At that moment, after realizing it, Rudius paused to offer an apology to Luke for this unintended turn of events. Did you know that Orsted has experienced countless time loops, including a battle with Hitogami in the Void World where he ultimately lost, determined to succeed. He vowed to keep looping until he defeated Hitogami. However, he stopped counting after a hundred returns, making him over 20,000 years old. In the previous loops, before Rudius was Isekai into those worlds, there were significant differences. For instance, Rudius Guerrit never existed, as Orsted mentioned that Paul had only two daughters and no son. Eris was originally intended to marry Luke Rare instead of Rudius. Her nickname was the Red Lion instead of Mad Dog. She also played a crucial role as the second person required for Ariel Animoy Asura to become queen. Chilfi became Roxy's disciple and an adventurer who conquered multiple labyrinths, ultimately achieving the status of a world-class labyrinth explorer. Therefore, Rudius Isekai into those worlds marked a new chapter, reshaping the course of fate experienced by Orsted in his time loops. Fun facts about Mashoku Tensei Part 8. Did you know that despite being praised as a prodigy and having natural talents, Gino is actually naive, unmotivated, and lacks a clear goal. He just felt like he did as he was told and didn't find it particularly amazing. These traits caused him to fall behind both Eris and even Nina at the Sword God style dojo in the Holy Land of Sword. However, after realizing his true goal of marrying Nina, which meant he had to defeat her father, Galfarian, Gino was awakened to a new sense of purpose. This newfound clarity ignited a fervent determination within him to strive towards achieving that objective. With this mindset, he was able to harness the full potential of his exceptional talent, exhibiting an unprecedented level of interest and effort in honing his swordsmanship skills. Eventually, he mustered the courage to challenge Galfarian to a duel for the right to marry Nina. In the end, he emerged victorious, claiming the title of the new sword god and securing a position among the seven great powers, all thanks to his desire to marry his cousin. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 9. Did you know that despite having a harem consisting of his wives, Rudius considers Eris as his husband? He even sees himself as a part of Eris' harem, which includes Rhenia and Persona. Rudius came to consider Eris as his husband. After she defeated him in bed on their first wedding night, he dominated the battle until his physique allowed it. But Eris' stamina ultimately overcame him. He accepted his defeat happily in the end. Eris is so assertive that she makes Rudius feel like a maiden in love. While Rudius offers arm pillows to his other wives, he receives one from Eris instead. Fun fact about Moshoku Tensei Part 10. Did you know that all of Rudius' wives seem to get pregnant? Right before he embarks on a journey somewhere, Rudius is quite the passionate man, often ensuring his wives are expecting before he sets off on his missions. In the first instance, before embarking on his journey to save Zenith in the Begaret continent, Shilfi became pregnant with Lucy on the second occasion, while Rudius was assisting Ariel in obtaining the throne in the Asura kingdom. 
Roxy was expecting Lara. During the third case, when Rudius was aiding Zanoba in the Chiron Kingdom, Eris was carrying ours. And in the last case, while Rudius and Zenith journeyed to Milishim, Shilfi was expecting once again. This time with Sieg, Rudius is a true connoisseur of parting gifts, leaving a legacy with every journey. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 11. Did you know that much like Shilfi, Rudia's hair also turned white due to mana strain? In the world of Mashoku Tensei, if a person uses too much mana and experiences mana exhaustion, it can affect their hair. Rudius experienced this a few times. The first time was during his battle against Orsted and the second time was in the final arc battle against Hidogami's apostles. His mana strain was mostly due to using the MK armor. Eris' hair also turned slightly white, however, unlike Sylphie, it didn't reach the roots, so they were able to restore their hair color. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 12. Did you know that Roxy received her knowledge about intimacy through Alina Lise's teachings? Alina Lise became Roxy's teacher in sexual techniques. This bothered Shilfi since Alina Lise never guided her in anything. This is also the reason why Rudius claims that Roxy is more of a technical type in bed, unlike Shilfi, who is more submissive, and Eris, who basically made Rudius her prey. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 13. Did you know that Rajird's daughter Luicelia will play a significant role in the battle against the resurrected demon god Laplace in the future? Orsted has stated in other loops that Luicelia is the final supered warrior who will deliver the decisive blow to Laplace. Orsted has also mentioned that the fates of Rajird and Norn are so intertwined that they inevitably end up together in every loop. In Rudius's current loop, when Orsted hears that Norn and Rajird named their daughter Luicelia, he wears an absurdly terrifying smile, sending shivers down Rudius's spine. This also implies that he realizes it's the name that aligns with his memories. Fun fact about Mushoku Tensei Part 14. Did you know that despite excelling and consistently outperforming Norn in every aspect, there's one thing in which Aisha felt Norn surpassed her, leaving her feeling a sense of loss. And that one thing is love and the ability to find happiness. At Norn's wedding with Rujur, Aisha asked her about her feelings. Norn replied that she felt grateful and content with her life. She found it hard to put into words, but she was certain that her future looked bright and would be filled with happiness. This was an experience that Aisha hadn't yet experienced and fulfilled. Hearing how Norn felt, Aisha experienced defeat for the first time, knowing that Norn had already found love and was satisfied with her life. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 15. Did you know that Rudia's children are immune to Orsted's curse? Orsted possesses a curse that instills fear in all living creatures in the Mashoku Tensei world. This is why he wears a helmet to mitigate the impact of his curse. Yet, Rudius originates from a different world, making him immune to Orsted's curse. This immunity passes down to all of Rudius' children. Additionally, Lucy thinking Orsted was her father due to Rudius rarely being at home, used to play with Orsted on occasion. Similarly, Lara takes great pleasure in frequently pranking Orsted. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 16. Did you know that in previous loops or timelines, where Rudius didn't exist, Eris, despite being given the formidable title of Red Lion, was actually weaker than she is in the current timeline with Rudius. Back then, she only had the potential to attain the rank of Sword Saint. However, in the current timeline, she has ascended to the level of Sword King and she even has the potential to become a sword emperor if she wanted to. This is precisely why, when Orsted first encountered her in Rudia's timeline, he remarked on the dramatic increase in her power. Eris's willpower and motivation are significantly stronger in the current loops compared to her previous iterations. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 17. Did you know that despite being a loving father, aside from Christina, Rudius is quite distant from his children. His kids have always known that their father is an incredibly important person. He's always busy and due to his work, he's rarely at home. Viewing him as a figure of high importance makes them feel somewhat hesitant towards him. Seeing her father prioritize his work made Lucy misunderstand and start influencing her siblings, leading them to believe that their father didn't have high expectations for them, which left them quite disappointed. Since then, except for Christina, his kids often avoid him whenever he's around, especially Sieg and Lucy. 
though Lara and Lily are more apathetic towards him. They at least don't actively avoid him. However, over time, this slowly changed after Rudius reconciled with them, such as when he accepted Lucy's relationship with Clive, allowed C to help his friend Pax Jr., and of course, accepted R's relationship with his aunt. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 18. Did you know that even after Paul was caught cheating on Zenith by impregnating Lelia, which angered her, Paul had actually been intimate with Lelia once before. This event was even mentioned in Episode 4 of Season 1. Back then, when Paul and Lelia were still at the dojo, Paul attacked Lelia in bed, taking her virginity, before hastily fleeing from the dojo. Paul's escape was so smooth, he could have auditioned for a role in Mission Impossible. Fun slash dark fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 19. Did you know that Zanobo was blessed with a Miko power that granted him abnormal strength? However, this gift came with a curse. It rendered him unable to create perfect dolls like Hishisho. And sadly, this power also played a role in a devastating incident from Zanobo's past. His wife, unable to understand his passion for dolls and their beauty, met a tragic fate when he accidentally squeezed her to death. Similarly, tragedy struck his infant brother, Julius, when Zanobo was just three years old. In a heartbreaking accident, he accidentally ripped his brother's head off. As a result of these events, Zanoba had originally intended to name his dwarf slave Julius. However, Rudius suggested a slight alteration to Julie because she was a girl. Fun fact about the Shoku Tensei Part 20. Did you know that despite the main story concluding, Rudius' name before reincarnation remains unknown? When Rudius meets his future self in Turning Point 4, he's shocked when his future self addresses him by his real name. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, his name was censored in the light novel. So, what is Rudius' real name? It's still a mystery, and the author may forever guard this secret. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 21. Did you know that in the Mashoku Tensei world, Rudius is capable of speaking multiple languages. These include the human tongue, beast god tongue, fighting god tongue, demon god tongue, and of course, Japanese. Ever since his reincarnation in the Isekai world, he was self-taught in learning languages when he was still young. The only languages he was unable to master are the Sky God Tongue and Ocean God Tongue languages, as he couldn't find any learning materials for them. Though, at the end of the day, they all speak Japanese, unless it's an English dub. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 22. Did you know that in a dark timeline, Aisha is the sole family member who remains by Rudius's side? Following Roxy's tragic demise, Rudius descends into madness, leading Lelia, Zenith, and Norn to have no choice but to leave him. Rudius's mistreatment of Shilfi and his choice of a prostitute over her shatters her heart. This leaves Ariel with no choice but to take her away from him, leaving Aisha as the only loyal family member who stays by his side. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 23. Did you know that after the teleportation incident, among Rudia's wives, Roxy is the only one who still has both of her parents. Sadly, both Sylphie and Eris parents met a tragic fate after the teleportation incident. Roxy's parents were fortunate because they didn't live there. As a result, while Roxy's parents are in good health, both Eris and Sylphie are now orphans. Did you know that Nanahoshi can't survive in the world of Mashoku Tensei without drinking tea? Unlike Rudius, Nanahoshi was not reincarnated, so she has no mana. Due to this, she suffers from Drain Syndrome, an ancient disease that affects those with too little mana capacity, which Nanahoshi had due to the nature of her body from another world. Drain Syndrome has no permanent cure, and it does not work even with the use of healing magic or detoxification magic. However, the sickness of Drain Syndrome can temporarily be relieved by drinking tea made from Sakasu grass, which removes the mana that has accumulated in their body through their waste. To get that grass, with the assistance of Paragius using teleportation, Rudius and his friends had to travel back to the Demon Continent. They acquired the information from Kishirika and later had to cross pet with Demon King at Ofei. If Paragius hadn't saved them, Rudius would have fallen into her hands. From that point on, Nanahoshi has to drink Sakusu tea daily.
Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 24. Did you know that each of Rudius' wives holds the title of the first girl for specific reasons? Roxy is the first girl who meets Rudius. Sylphie is the first girl who becomes Rudius' wife. And Eris is the first girl to take Rudius and also the first one to break his heart. These women have earned the title, the first girl in Rudius's life for reasons both extraordinary and personal. Randolph Marion is one of the seven great powers, titled Death God. He is the grandson of Kalman too, and a descendant of the demon Lord Otto Fey. Since a young age, he had been trained in the North God style. However, as he grew older, he decided to develop his own technique and successfully defeated one of the seven great powers, earning the title for himself. Nevertheless, after that victory, he faced a constant stream of challengers seeking to dethrone him and claim his title. After enduring a relentless decade of battle, Randolph finally grew weary and made the decision to become a chef. He took over a relative's troubled restaurant. However, he's a chef. His food tastes disgusting. Due to one child's harsh criticism, he decided to close the restaurant and became the Knight of the Dragon King Kingdom. He was later ordered to escort Pax Sharon in his coup d'etat on the Sharon Kingdom, and eventually became Pax's loyal bodyguard, because he was the only one who understood his cooking, although it was just a way to win his heart. Fun fact about Mushoku Tensei Part 25 Did you know that Randolph possesses his own distinctive and unorthodox sword style? While bearing some resemblance to the North God style, Randolph's technique incorporates significant alterations, giving rise to what is now known as the Sword of Bewitching. This style of swordsmanship is crafted to outfox opponents, ingeniously creating openings in combat. It encompasses two distinct sets of techniques. The Sword of Loring, which entices an enemy to attack when they should be on the defensive, and the Sword of Hesitation, a technique that prompts an enemy to defend when they should be launching an assault. Randolph's sword style empowers him to manipulate his opponents, compelling them to attack when they shouldn't and defend when they should be on the offensive. As a result, Orsted's advice to Rudius was crystal clear. Attack when you typically defend. Defend when you usually attack. Recognize the crucial moments for each, keep your focus, and overpower him. Prugius Dola is one of the seven great heroes, who sealed away the demon god Laplace for hundred years ago, much like Orsted. He's a high-ranking member of the Dragon Tribe, commanding twelve familiars. Prugius orchestrated the reconstruction of the ancient Sky Castle and alongside his companions, he managed to seal and defeat Laplace. As a tribute to his achievements, the new era was named the Armored Dragon Era, and he was given the title Armored Dragon King. It is said that in 80 plus years, the place will revive and Prugius currently waits for his revival. Despite his intense animosity towards Laplace, there lies an ironic twist in Perugia's background. Ironically, it was Laplace who named him Perugius. However, in an unfortunate turn of events, Hidogami caused Laplace to split into two existences. And one of those existences is the existence that Perugius despised the most. In addition, Laplace was never a bad guy. He was just one of Hidogami's victims. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 26 Did you know that due to the grudge stemming from the Laplace War, Rugius prohibits old demon races, including the harmless Roxy, from entering his Sky Fortress? However, there was a particular occasion when Perugius made an exception and allowed Roxy into his floating castle. This exception occurred when Zanoba earnestly requested Perugius's cooperation. At that time, Zanoba urgently needed to return to his troubled kingdom. Both Zanoba and Rudius sought Perugius's assistance in using the teleportation circles to transport them, along with Roxy, to their destination. Perugius initially resisted due to his stance on demon races, but Zanoba's persuasive plea rooted in their close friendship and the urgency of the situation led him to relent, albeit with conditions. Only then were they granted permission to use the teleportation circles to reach their destination. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 27 Did you know that Rudius trained similarly to One Punch Man to build his muscles? While this wasn't mentioned in the anime, in the novel, he talks about his rigorous workout routine which consists of 100 sit-ups, 100 push-ups, and 100 squats, followed by a 6.2 mile run. However, he didn't want to lose his hair, so he worked even harder. Unfortunately, he didn't gain superhuman powers like Saitama, and luckily for him, he didn't lose his hair either.
Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 20. Did you know that at the beginning of every time loop, Forrest dedicates 10 years to honing his physical prowess? Having experienced life countless times, he finds that in each new loop, his physique resets to zero. That's why he invests 10 years to fortify his physical resilience before embarking on another cycle. Fun fact about Mishoku Tensei Part 29. Did you know that all of Rudius' married children, Lucy, Ars, and Christina, all ended up with their relatives? Ars married his aunt, Lucy married her half-great uncle, and Christina married her second cousin. This intriguing pattern might give the impression that Rudius' children had two options, either marry a relative or remain single, Fun fact slash theory about Mashoku Tensei Part 30. Did you know that according to Hidogami, if he were to perish, it could potentially lead to the end of the world? Currently, Hidogami is trapped in the void world by the first dragon god. However, in the six-phased world, each realm is strongly influenced by the existence of its respective god. The world that Rudius and company currently inhabit is the human world, and it was previously under the firm dominion of the original human god. While not extensively explained in the web novel, the first dragon god speculates that the original human god, who once held sway over the human realm, may have been vanquished by Hitogami, and his power subsequently taken by him. As a result, Hitogami now holds the significance of affecting the human world. Consequently, the presence of the human world, also known as the Mashoku Tensei world, could potentially be in danger if anything happens to Hitogami. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 31. Did you know that in the previous loop, Pax Sharon was supposed to seize the throne of his kingdom and eventually transform it into a republic? This republic would have grown in power, eventually becoming the birthplace of Laplace. Laplace is one of the individuals who held an artifact that Orsted needed to access the Void World, a world where Hitogami is sealed. However, Due to Hidogami using his apostles to prevent the formation of the Republic of Sharon, and subsequently driving him to suicide, this republic was never founded as a result. Orsted no longer knows where Laplace will first appear in 100 years. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 32 Did you know that due to Vita's mind control effect, Rudius dreams about being married to girls other than his wives? Due to Vita's influence on Rudius, he dreams about marrying Linnea, Ariel, and the last, Aisha, all along with his fabricated memories. Rudius quite enjoyed his fabricated memories with Linnea and Ariel, but not so much with Aisha. It wasn't until he saw Paul for the third time that he fully realized he was under Vita's control. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 33. Did you know that after Lucy used Sylphie's brush to comb their dog Leo, Sylphie became furious with Lucy. Lucy then apologized and explained that her hair perfectly matched Leo's. This made Rudius chuckle. However, seeing Rudius laughing only added fuel to Sylphie's anger. As a result, she didn't speak to him for days. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 34. Did you know that if you consider Rudius's past life, he and Roxy are about the same age? So, having her as his wife, in terms of age, it doesn't make him a pedo, but physically does. In contrast with his other wives, Sylphie and Eris, it's not a matter of physique that raises concerns, but rather age. However, in that world, age is not relevant. Rue Jurd and Aline Lisset are separated by centuries, from Norn and Cliff. In conclusion, Age is just a number. There's no such thing as a pedophile in Mashoku Tensei. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 35. Did you know that if the teleport incident hadn't occurred, and somehow Rudius had only married Eris, Eris probably wouldn't have allowed Rudius to take a second wife. Eris is quite possessive and prefers to keep Rudius all to herself. Strangely, Eris doesn't seem to mind if Rudius is intimate with maids. On one occasion, when none of Rudius' wives, including the pregnant heiress, were available, Eris suggested that he engage with Linnea, who happened to be working as Rudius' maid at that time. In response, Rudius grabbed Linnea and tossed her out of the house, then locked the door. He declared to Eris that he might be a f***y bastard, but it didn't mean he wanted to do it with everyone, including that stupid cat. 
Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 36. Did you know that? When Rudeus's children were introducing themselves to Claire aka Rudeus's grandmother, all of them managed to greet her politely, except for Lara. She was just picking her nose, and didn't give a sh Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 37. Did you know that archers are exceedingly rare in the Mashoku Tensei world? It's more advantageous to rely on magic for greater distances. Not only is it more accurate in hitting a target, but it also inflicts more damage. Bows are deemed utterly useless and rarely sought after, which is why you hardly ever come across them in weapon shops. This is precisely why encountering an archer adventure is such a rare occurrence. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 38. Did you know that the beloved drink of the ogre race, known as ogre water, is actually soy sauce? During his journey with Kalman II and Doga in the Bahiro Kingdom, they stumbled upon a quaint bar. Rudius caught a peculiar scent, and once they received their orders, Doga promptly took a sip of one of the ogre water drinks. To his surprise, he choked on it. Initially suspecting it might be poison, Rudius decided to give it a try. He quickly realized that it was the thing he had been searching for all these years, a soy sauce. On the next occasion, he prepared Tamako Kaki Gohan with a touch of soy sauce. He felt blessed to be able to savor one of his favorite dishes from his previous world. He also shared it with Rujerd and Norm, and he was satisfied with their response. However, when he mentioned that the raw egg might upset their stomachs, and suggested using detoxification magic, Norm grew furious with her brother for potentially creating something that could cause illness. Fun fact about Mishoku Tensei Part 39 Did you know that while still in the adventurer party, fangs of the Black Wolf, during the beast race mating season, Paul often seizes the opportunity to engage in intimate activities with Gislaine. Naturally, Aileen Elise would join in, creating a three-way arrangement. Paul has been intimate with every female member on their team. His contributions are truly remarkable. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 40. Did you know that Jisoo has a penchant for gambling to the point of being addicted? Despite frequently using the party's funds for gambling, he consistently emerged victorious, leaving his party members with no complaint. However, there was one occasion when he lost everything in the city of ours. Fortunately, a kind-hearted man Tal Hand came to his aid. He sold his gloves and gave the money to Jisoo, rescuing that monkey face from his predicament. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 41 Did you know despite being born from an incestuous relationship between Aisha and ours, Leroy Grarit is actually a healthy child? Leroy possesses Aisha's intelligence but also exhibits a penchant for perversity like ours as he has shown his love for big breasts. Surprisingly, unlike Aisha, who received strict treatment from her mother, Lilia's attitude towards Leroy is completely opposite. She adores him and is quite happy in his presence. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 42 Did you know when Soldat met Eris for the first time? He became unpleasant towards her. Soldat understood the gravity of the situation and empathized with the hardships Rudius had endured. Eris's departure had left Rudius in a state of depression, even bordering on suicidal moments. Soldat couldn't fathom how Eris had the audacity to come back into Rudius's life now, especially when his friend was suffering so profoundly because of the woman who had caused it all. After hearing Soldat's words, Eris became irritatum but Rudius quickly calmed her down. Soldat's genuine care for Rudius is evident, demonstrating the true essence of friendship. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 43 Did you know that Mila's believers strongly prohibit polygamy and are quite vocal about it? For instance, when Norm discovered that Rudius had been involved with Roxy, she became furious. She couldn't accept the fact that her brother was with another woman. Despite being married to Sylphie, she refused to acknowledge Roxy as Rudius's second wife, claiming that the god Millis would never forgive him. Norn was also perplexed as to why her brother was pursuing a girl, who was the same age as her. A similar situation arose with Cliff when he learned that Rudius was already taking another wife. He would launch into lengthy lectures, not only when Rudius married Roxy, but also when he married Eris. He insisted that women should not be treated as mere collectibles. And then there's Zenith. Upon learning that his son was marrying Eris as his third wife, Rudius received a slap in the face. In response, Rudius promised Zenith that he would not marry again. 
Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 44. Did you know that many members of the Grerit family have a distinctive feature in their hair called an ahoge? An ahoge is an exaggerated cowlick, which is often associated with character traits like airheadedness. This feature is shared by several members of the Grerit family, including Roxy, Rudy, Aris, Lara, Norn, Lucy, Sophie, and perhaps Christina. Zenith also had this in the past. It's just a strand of hair, but it adds to their special appeal. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 45. Did you know that despite being a good and virtuous man, who wishes to restore his race's reputation, Rujard is not soft. If someone does evil in front of him, especially harming a child, he will not hesitate to kill them without showing any mercy. Rujard's unwavering commitment to justice showcases that being good doesn't mean being soft. Fun fact about Mushoku Tensei Part 46. Did you know that just before departing back to Prugia's castle, after finding Nana Hoshi's cure, Cliff received a demon eye of identification from Kishirika. With this eye, he could discern detailed information about objects. However, it only worked for things known to Kishirika. Anything she didn't recognize would appear as unknown. His demon eye played a pivotal role in the development of Zer, prosthetic limbs, and Rudeus MK armor, thanks to this ability. He also managed to halt a disease outbreak among the supered race, ultimately saving them from a dire situation caused by Vita. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 47. Did you know that despite being the main character in the series, Rudeus is not destined to be the chosen one to defeat the main villain. It is not he who is meant to confront Hitogami. Instead, this responsibility lies with his descendants such as Lara Grerit and one of his descendants from Eris. Fun fact about Mushoku Tensei Part 48. Did you know in Rudia's personal religion, each god is bestowed with a title based on their unique attributes. Sylphie is revered as the goddess of love for her kind-heartedness and unwavering emotional support that binds the family together. Roxy, on the other hand, earns the title of goddess of wisdom thanks to her invaluable teachings in magic and the profound influence she had on shaping Rudia's ideology with her intelligent advice. Finally, Eris assumes the role of the goddess of war, having dedicated years to honing her skills as a sword king, all in the pursuit of protecting him. In this way, each of these remarkable women played an integral role in shaping Rudeus' life and beliefs, embodying the virtues of love, wisdom, and valor. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 49. Did you know that Lilia is actually ranked as an intermediate in the Water God's style of swordsmanship? She received training in her father Augusta's dojo, but it wasn't sufficient for her to become an instructor. Augusta then started training Paul Grerit, who displayed remarkable talent in swordsmanship, hoping that he would eventually marry Lilia and take over the dojo. Unfortunately, Paul fled after sexually assaulting her, crushing Augusta's dream of him inheriting the dojo. At one point, Lilia served as a guard maid in Asura. While her usual duties involved typical maid work, she was always ready to pick up a sword to protect her master if the need arose. She once bravely defended Ariel Animoy Asura from assassins. Unfortunately, due to injuries sustained in the attempt, she could never fully regain her former strength, which led to a decline in her swordsmanship abilities. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 50. Did you know that within the three sword techniques, the sword god style is considered the strongest? This is largely due to its technique. Known as the Long Sword of Light, in this move, the sword is firmly gripped with both hands, channeling all its force into a single, powerful swing. Evading or defending against this technique is extremely challenging due to the incredible speed of the slash, which when fully mastered can approach the speed of light. Its sheer power even allows it to cut through heavily armored opponents. The existence of this technique is what truly solidifies the Sword God style as the mightiest of the three styles. Adofei or Adofei is the demon lord of the demon continent and a member of the immortal demon clan. Alongside her brother Badagadi, she is one of the descendants of Necros Lacrosse. Despite her formidable power due to her immortal demon blood, she is extremely dumb, even surpassing Eris, yet she despises when someone labels her with that term. However, when she admits defeat, she becomes calmer and more willing to listen to the person who defeats her. She was once captured and sealed by humans, but was later revived and joined the place in the human demon Great War only to be eventually defeated by the first North God, Kalman I.
In their first encounter, Rudius almost fell into her hands. In the second encounter, he tried to persuade her to join forces against Hidogami's apostles, despite receiving gifts as an apology for their initial clash. Due to her brain on vacation, she still insisted on a duel. Luckily, with his MK armor, Rudius was able to make her admit defeat. This led Adofe becoming Rudius' ally in the final arc of Mashoku Tensei. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 51. Did you know that Adofe is so dumb, even beyond Eris's level? She struggles to understand even the simplest statements, and often interprets old comments and arguments as challenges for a fight. Rudius's first encounter with Adofe wasn't pleasant, however. Forsted suggested that Rudius return to Adofe and try to recruit her as an ally, to join forces against Hitogami's apostles. Subsequently, Rudius goes back to her and makes an effort to persuade her. Upon seeing her again, Adofe took a moment. With some prompting from Moore, to recall that Rudius was the one she had an issue with back then, she quickly insisted on a fight for payback, despite receiving gifts as an apology for their initial clash. Due to her brain being on vacation, she still insisted on a fight. When Rudius gave her wine from the kingdom of Asura, and asked her to forgive him, she seemed pleased and claimed that she forgave Rudius for what he did. However, she still insisted on a fight. It didn't stop there. Rudius also gave the phantom alcohol which surprised her. She then declared a duel with Rudius for that alcohol. Despite Rudius already explaining that it was for her, she still insisted on a fight. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 52. Did you know that in Episode 13 of Mashoku Tensei Season 1, Roxy wonders if she somehow ended up trapped inside the labyrinth. She wishes that a young, tall, muscular, slim man with a childish face would come to her rescue. This wish actually comes true in the future, during the search for Zenith. Roxy indeed finds herself stuck inside the labyrinth. Lo and behold, a young, muscular, slim man with a childish face arrives to save her. And that man is none other than our beloved main character named Rudius. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 53. Did you know that in Episode 7 of Season 1, at the end of the episode, Rudius made a wish for girls to fall from the sky, and after the teleport incident, he actually got what he wished for. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 54. Did you know that Orsted is not only the descendant of the first dragon god, but he is also descended from the original human god. Orsted's father, the first dragon god, married Lanaria, who is the daughter of the original human god. This makes Orsted a descendant of gods from both sides of his family. Fun fact about Mushoku Tensei Part 55. Did you know that Perugius was actually named by Laplace? The very existence that he despises the most. Dola, Perugius's mother, was actually Laplace's mentor in the dragon world back then. In her final moments, as the dragon world was being destroyed by Hitogami, she asked Laplace to bestow a name upon her child and bring him to the human world. The place ended up giving him the name Perugius. Keep in mind that this is the original The Place. Before being split by Badagadi, who was instructed by our beloved villain named Hitogami. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 56. Did you know that Rudius's fate is so powerful that even Hitogami struggles to harm him easily? Rudius's existence poses a significant threat to Hitogami, as he predicts that Rudius's descendants will play a major role in aiding Orsted to defeat him in the future. Hitogami also acknowledges that Rudius and his wives possess exceptionally strong destinies. If Rudius's fate were less robust, Hitogami could employ simpler methods to try to eliminate him. However, due to Rudius's resilient fate, Hitogami resorts to complex schemes to earn Rudius's trust and advance his own plans. Yet, Rudius's future self foils Hitogami's plans by revealing them to his past self. Now that Rudius has aligned himself with Orsted, Hitogami shifts his focus to Rudius Rudius's descendants, whose fates are comparatively weaker than those of Rudius and his wives. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 57. Did you know that despite her natural talent for anything related to magic tools and magic items, Lily Grerid is quite the airhead. She often experiments with various magic items on herself, just to see how they work. Additionally, she's not very skilled at riding horses. While she can manage to get on one, she's completely at a loss for what to do next. If something catches her attention, she'll immediately head towards it, even if she's on a horse. She'll quickly dismount and make her way to her point of interest. 
Her lack of a sense of direction often leads her to lose her way when traveling between her home and workplace. This is precisely why her parents won't allow her to attend school in Asura. Despite her airheadedness, she possesses the talent to inherit Rudius MK Armor research and has been granted a private workshop by Zanova Company. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 58 Did you know that when Lucy was born, Lelia mentioned that Lucy's behavior reminded her of Rudeus when he was a child? Upon hearing this, Rudeus grew concerned that his child might potentially be a reincarnation just like him. He then spoke English to ensure that she wasn't the same reincarnate being as him. Seeing her brother attempt language acrobatics, Aisha couldn't help but chuckle. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 59 Did you know that Perugius had no idea that Rudius' fourth child had already been named Siegart by him? After receiving his baptism on the Divine Continent from Perugius, Sieg, who already had a name, was bestowed another by Perugius Saladin. Upon handing Sieg back to his parents, Perugius declared that from now on, his name would be Saladin. They were confused, but then Perugius reminded Rudius of his promise to grant their child a name as a gift if it was a boy. Silphy wanted to clarify that Sieg already had a name, but before she could finish her sentence, Perugius interjected with, Don't thank me. While Siegart was already a good name, Rudius couldn't decline Perugius's gift of the Muslim-inspired name. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 60 Did you know that despite being beautiful, charismatic, and charming, much like the Asura nobles, Ariel has a very perverted side. In the web novel version, she tends to sexually harass Shilf. Ariel is a sexual sadist who enjoys tormenting her maids, and she also has masochistic tendencies. When she first encounters Orsted due to his curse, she feels threatened and even pees herself, but strangely enough, she also seems to be somewhat affected by a mix of fear and arousal. As she grows older and secure, the throne. Her covert behavior starts to fade away, but she still maintains her deviant inclinations. After becoming queen, she rejects the idea of marriage and instead forms a whole harem of concubines, including both men and women. She even has five children, each with a different father. Fun facts about Mashoku Tensei Part 61 Did you know that there was a moment when Rudius mistakenly identified Lara as Roxy? He approached and embraced who he believed to be Roxy from behind only to realize that it was Lara. In that instant, Lara showed understanding remarking that such mix-ups happen and she forgave Rudius. Despite her forgiveness, Rudius couldn't forgive himself. Fun facts about Mushoku Tensei Part 62 Did you know that among all of Rudius' children, Ours is considered the most distant from his father, while his sister, Christina, is practically glued to Rudius. Ours rarely communicates with him. This distance isn't solely due to his father's busy schedule, but also stems from the Aisha incident during his early years, leading Ours to live a separate life. It seems as if he's the only one added to the family, without developing a deep connection with Rudius. However, in Rudius' retiring age, Ours does continue his father's work in helping Orsted. This suggests a potential off-screen relationship that may have developed between them. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 63 Did you know that before attending school in the Asura Kingdom, Christina expected herself to be like a princess, however, after seeing how the Asura students behaved, she became heiress 2.0. Christina found it challenging to deal with the Asura nobles, who often looked down on commoners and caused trouble. This irritation pushed her to resort to using her fists to solve problems. Whether they acted like jerks or simply ignored her, they all received a punch. Instead of molding her into a princess, Asura Academy awakened her heiress bloodline. Fun fact about Mushoku Tensei Part 64 Did you know that in Episode 11 of Season 2, Rudius tells Sylphie that he would even bring down the flying castle for her? Interestingly, this moment turns out to be a foreshadowing event in the light novels Volume 23. When Sylphie gives birth to her second child, Sieg who has green hair, concerns arise because he could potentially be a reincarnation of the place, a demon that Perugius despises the most. Despite Orsted's assurance that Sieg isn't the place, there remains a possibility that Orsted could be wrong. In response to this, Rudius reiterates the same quote about bringing down Perugius's castle to Sylphie once again. He declares that if Orsted is wrong, he'll protect Sieg, even if he has to bring the floating fortress crashing down to do it. Fitz, 
Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 65. Did you know that during an intense battle, to save Zenith from a Hydra, Rudius lost one of his arms? Fortunately, Zanoba created a prosthetic arm that Rudius could use. What amazed Rudius even more was the fact that the hands had the ability to feel sensations of Roxy and Sylphie's chests. Fun fact about Mushoku Tensei Part 66. Did you know that Norn felt immense pressure whenever her strict grandmother, Claire, urged her to outshine Aisha? Claire hoped Norn would showcase a talent worthy of the Lateria family's honor. However, Norn's limited abilities resulted in repeated failures, prompting stern scoldings from Claire. This pressure makes Norn resent her own grandmother. However, behind all of Claire's actions pressuring Norn, her true motivation is to shield her granddaughter from constant mockery by Aisha. Claire cannot tolerate her own granddaughter, being consistently belittled by a stranger's child. She simply wishes for Norn to prove that she is not deserving of such disrespect. Did you know that Jisoo is actually a hidden apostle of Hidogami? Much like Rudeus, Jisoo's life was heavily influenced by Hidogami's guidance. Unfortunately, Hidogami finds pleasure in others' suffering, even driving Jisoo to destroy his own tribe. Despite his deep resentment for Hitogami, Jisoo's life was saved multiple times through Hitogami's interventions. This sense of indebtedness led Jisoo to remain loyal and become Hitogami's apostle. Upon discovering Rudia's betrayal of Hitogami and his new role as Orsted's subordinate, Jisoo expressed his disappointment. He emphasized that, despite Hitogami's true intentions, he had done nothing but assist Rudius thus far. And for that reason, after Rudius resolves his issues in militia, Jisoo reveals himself as a Hitogami apostle and declares war against him, becoming one of the final antagonists in Mashoku Tensei. Alexander Ryback, also known as Kalman 3, is one of the strongest opponents in the last arc of Mashoku Tensei. He is the current North God of North God style, and was previously one of the Seven Great Powers. In the final arc, he becomes one of Jisoo's associates, with the main objective of attaining the title of hero by destroying the Super Tron and defeating Orsted. However, he is unaware of Hidogami's scheme. Despite that, he is an incredibly powerful fighter, wielding the strongest sword with the the ability to manipulate gravity, he managed to solos. Eris, Rudius, Rudyard, and even Kalman too. But later on, with his MK army, Rudius manages to briefly disable him by taking advantage of his underestimation and finding the right opening. But due to his immortal blood, he manages to recover, only to eventually be defeated by Orsted. After being defeated and humbled by Orsted in battle, he eventually becomes one of his subordinates. In the end, he guides Seedgard Salad and Grant as a student. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 67. Did you know that despite being one of Hitogami's apostles, Jisoo doesn't always obey Hitogami? For instance, if Jisoo hadn't sent a letter of assistance to Rudius when attempting to save Zenith, Roxy might not have been rescued. This would have played into Hitogami's hands. Furthermore, if Jisoo had kept his identity as one of Hitogami's apostles hidden, it would have benefited Hitogami even more. Jisoo's independent actions not only shaped the fate of individual characters but also had far-reaching consequences for Hidogami's grand scheme. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 68. Did you know that due to their dominant genes, the elf race finds it very difficult to have offspring? Since there aren't many elves around in Mashoku Tensei, they often mate with other races. However, due to their strong genes, they rarely conceive. This is precisely why, despite mating with many men, Alina Lisse could enjoy herself without getting pregnant. Additionally, this is the reason why, compared to his other wives, Sylphie got the most from Rudy in bed. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 69. Did you know that after the fall of the Sharon Kingdom, Zanoba lost his noble status? Despite this, Ginger, his former loyal Imperial Guard, chose to remain by his side. Zanoba decided to accept her though chose not to marry her, as his primary interest lies in dolls. Even though Ginger seems to be the perfect wife, Zanoba can only be aroused by dolls. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 70. Did you know that Shinohara Okihito was the first person to be transported to another world? Shinohara Okihito 
is among the individuals Rudia saved, alongside Nanahoshi, from a truck accident, and he was the initial one sent to another world. However, he hasn't arrived yet because playback Maiko from the future caused a time loop in that world. While Nanahoshi was teleported in K-417, Okihito's transfer occurred in the year K-500. Unfortunately, Okihito died due to unforeseen events. Playback Maiko couldn't accept this outcome, prompting her to reset time to the past and summon other souls. Her actions led to two other souls, Rudius and Nanahoshi finding themselves isekai to that world. Furthermore, she was also responsible for the event known as the teleport slash mana calamity incident. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 71. Did you know that after losing Dijino and relinquishing his sword god title, along with his rank among the seven great powers, Galfarian lost confidence in his sword god style. In the final arc, he became one of Jisu's associates and faced Eris and Rujard. However, during that battle, Gal appeared hesitant to rely on his once formidable sword god style, and instead resorted to the unfamiliar water god style. This hesitation made him less sharp than usual, and his tunnel vision on Eris prevented him from noticing Rujard's presence, ultimately leading to his defeat. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 72. Did you know that? The Migard race maintains their teenage appearance and only resumes aging after they reach 150 years. This distinctive trait explains why their appearance remains largely unchanged, even in the distant future. For instance, when Rudius is in his old age and approaching the end of his life, Roxy's appearance still shows no signs of aging. Age is just a number, but for Migards, it's more like a temporary inconvenience. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 73. Did you know that? While searching for Paul's family in the demon continent, Alina Lisse met Batagadi at a local club, and they did it after a few drinks. Following Alina Lisse's separation from Tolland and Roxy, Batagadi accompanied her to find Rudius. However, halfway through the journey, Batagadi decided to part ways with Alina Lisse, disembarking on the Ogre Island before eventually encountering Rudius at the Ranoa Magic Academy. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 74. Did you know that Rudius, using knowledge from his past life, invented something incredibly useful? It's crafted from the skin of a rainforest frog, known for its stretchy yet strong skin. Rudius turned it into a highly sought-after product. The item became immensely popular, prompting even Luke to establish a factory for its production in Asura. Rudius himself found practical use for it, and this coveted item happened to be none other than a condom. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 75. Did you know that if the teleportation incident hadn't occurred, Philip Boreas Grerit, Eris's father, had a plan for Rudius to marry her and take over the Boreas house. He believed that Rudius, being a prodigy, would be a valuable asset in the rebellion he and Soros were plotting against the Nodo's house. Despite appearing as a pleasant, albeit slightly condescending individual, Philip reveals his manipulative side when he uses his own daughter as a bargaining chip to recruit Rudius for his coup attempt. Philip harbors fiery ambitions, unafraid even to challenge Asura nobility. Unfortunately, due to the teleportation incident, his aspirations were never realized. In the end, the teleportation incident thwarted Philip's plans and hopes. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 76. Did you know that Alina Lisse would sleep with any man, except Rudius? Whenever they traveled together, she never attempted to seduce Rudius, even when he was heavily affected by a succubus, awakening his arousal and making him incredibly thirsty. Instead of succumbing to the temptation, Alina Lisse actually helped snap Rudius out of it. Alina Lisse would never touch Rudius because she detests the idea of becoming part of the Paul family dynamics, such as Paul taking on a paternal role toward her or other complicated scenarios. She is also determined to avoid any situation that could lead to her granddaughter, Sylphie, being involved in NTR caused by her. Interestingly, she let Roxy handle that job when Rudius was depressed after Paul's death. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 77. Did you know that Jisu belongs to the demon race? Specifically, he is a member of the Nuka tribe, a group resembling monkeys. Tragically, due to Hitogami's twisted pleasure derived from the suffering of others, Jisu unknowingly became the instrument of his tribe's destruction. As a result, he became the last surviving member of the Nuka race, as his hometown was annihilated through Hitogami's manipulation. Ultimately, Jisu meets his demise in the final arc, marking the official extinction of the demon race known as Nukadi in the Mushoku Tensei world.
Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 70. Did you know that despite Luke's extensive training, as a royal bodyguard in swordsmanship since childhood, Sylphie outshines him in power. Luke holds the rank of intermediate in Sword God, and is a beginner in Water God style. His skills, however, fall short to the extent that Rudius easily defeats him in a sword duel without relying on magic. Even Ariel admits that Luke's abilities are rather mediocre. In fact, Luke's sword skills are so bad that even a butter knife could give him a run for his money. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 79. Did you know that, in order to protect his family from Hitogami, Orsted instructed Rudius to summon a familiar using a scroll provided by him. This scroll contained a set of contracts between summoners and familiars. However, the initial attempt didn't unfold as planned. Rudius accidentally summoned Omanfi, one of Prugius's familiars. Upon arrival, Omanfi scolded Rudius and expressed a desire to return to serving Prugius, requesting release from the situation. Following Rudius's apology and compliance, Omanfi was sent back to Prugius. In the second attempt, Rudius successfully summoned Leo, a dog destined to safeguard his family and assist Lara in the future. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 80. Did you know that swordsmanship in the world of Mashoku Tensei is so powerful that, regardless of how skilled you are in magic, you still have to depend on it. This becomes one of Rudius's biggest regrets. He wishes he had delved deeper into and learned more about swordsmanship in his early years. If only he had, he might have been able to defend himself better when facing the Hydra, and Paul wouldn't have had to sacrifice himself to protect him. This deeply affected him leading him to reflect on the sorrow of neglecting swordsmanship. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 81. Did you know that being one of the seven great powers doesn't always accurately reflect the true order of strength? For instance, Technique God Laplace, who holds the highest rank, is actually less powerful than Orsted. Orsted, despite being considered the strongest, holds the second rank and deliberately restrains his full power due to slow mana recovery, saving it for a future showdown with Hidogami. Similarly, Randolph ranked fifth may not necessarily surpass Sword God, North God, or even Water God. His decline in strength is attributed to the loss of his prime. Moreover, Rudius, as one of the seven great powers, openly admits to his shortcomings. His attainment of the position among the seven great powers was also due to the support of his friends when he faced North God Kalman III, and also with the support of his MK armor. Lastly, there's Badagadi. His third rank among the seven great powers is attributed to wearing a remarkable armor, known as the Fighting God's Golden Armor, crafted by Laplace. This armor bestows upon its wearer the title of Fighting God. Badagadi happens to be the current wielder of this powerful artifact. In essence, the seven great powers are not always what they seem. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 82. Did you know that if Rudius and Sylphie's first child had been a boy, Rudius would have named him Paul? Rudius had initially planned to name their child Sirius if it was a boy and Lucy if it was a girl. However, after a distressing time following the loss of his father, Paul, in the teleportation labyrinth, he reconsidered and decided to name the baby Paul if it was a boy. Fortunately, their child turned out to be a girl, bringing relief to Rudius. They were also relieved that she didn't inherit green hair from her mother. Rudius chose to name her Lucy, derived from the first letters of his own name and Sylphie's name. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 83. Did you know that despite her tender age, Lucy has already embraced the role of a caring big sister? Whenever Lara or Ars feels upset, Lucy promptly rushes over to comfort them. When Sieg was just a baby, she often tended to him and quickly fetched Lilia or Aisha if he began crying. In instances where Lara encounters bullying from other kids, Lucy wastes no time in confronting the situation head on. When Ars causes trouble, Lucy takes it upon herself to scold him, helping him understand the consequences consequences of his actions. Interestingly, she also treats Clive as her younger brother, despite the fact that he's technically her half-great uncle. Rudius is genuinely amazed by his daughter's behavior. Lucy not only proves to be a loving sister, but also sets an exceptional example for her siblings, earning their admiration and respect. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 84. Did you know that despite being hailed as the mightiest among the dragon tribe, Orsted isn't actually the most powerful. His father, the first dragon god, surpasses him in strength. The first dragon god possesses an awe-inspiring ability to annihilate entire worlds. Committing genocide on an unimaginable scale, he obliterated realms, defeating every god who ruled over those realms. In fact, the denizens of the human world remain blissfully unaware of the unparalleled might of the first dragon god who lived back then. The author has confirmed 
that the first Dragon God stands as the strongest character in the six-phased world, trailing only behind the creation God. It's worth noting that the term God in the original six-phased world differs from the gods referenced in the human world, and is far greater than the concept of the seven great powers in the current world of Mashoku Tensei. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 85. Did you know that Orsted required special artifacts to access the Void World, a realm where Hitogami is sealed? Sadly, obtaining these special artifacts involve the demise of their current holders. Unfortunately, these items are linked to the five dragon generals. In the current loop, Orsted has already vanquished all but two of them, Prudius and Laplace. These two individuals possess the remaining special artifacts necessary for Orsted to enter the Void World. Consequently, Orsted is patiently waiting for Laplace's rebirth. Rudius also considered the situation with Prudius. However, considering the timeline, it's likely that Rudius may have already met his demise before that unfortunate situation unfolds. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 86. Did you know that after Lara had a great time playing in Orsted's office, Orsted observed her mischievous grin. He couldn't help but wonder about the reason. Behind her naughty expression, upon returning to his office, Orsted discovered a bunch of durian fruits scattered all over his chair. As he began to clean up and collect the scattered fruit, he was in for a surprise. Just as he was about to place the bag in his desk drawer, five grasshoppers jumped out from inside. It took him a moment to realize that he had fallen victim to Lara's prank. Instead of getting upset, Orsted is actually smiled, finding the whole situation entertaining. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 87 Did you know that Orsted defeated Alexander in the same way? He defeated Rudius. In both instances, the opponents ended up kneeling and lost both of their hands. Interestingly, Orsted has a penchant for donutting his victims creating a donut hole in their chests, a gruesome act he demonstrated when he pierced young Rudius. Fortunately, Orsted healed Rudius afterward. He repeated this method with Rada, the water god. Orsted's victories highlight a unique, albeit brutal, adherence to the philosophy of If you can't beat him, join him. As for those who remain Hitogami apostles, their fate is simple. Now you die. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 88. Did you know that in her life, there's one thing that made Eris feel incredibly proud and satisfied with her achievement? It's not about being a great swordsman or anything like that, but rather being Rudeus's husband, I mean, wife. There is nothing else that makes Eris so proud other than being Rudeus's wife. With joy, she proudly declares her status as Rudeus's wife, even though she is his third wife. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 89. Did you know that after Rudeus dies, he expects to reunite with Paul, Eris, and Jisu? Sadly, during his last conversation with Hitogami just before completely disappearing, Hitogami reveals to Rudeus that when a person dies, their soul transforms into mana, blending with others to create something new. However, Rudeus hails from another world, leaving Hitogami uncertain about his fate. At this juncture, Rudeus realizes that meeting Paul and Jisu is an impossibility. Despite Sylphie and Roxy assuring him that Eris is waiting, he will not meet her. He turns into nothingness, a stark contrast to what he expected. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 90. Did you know that even in her 70s, Eris continues to train with great enthusiasm, until one day, after her usual routine of exercise and jogging, she felt exhausted and decided to rest in her bed. Rudeus thought Eris was simply peacefully resting. Little did he know that this moment marked the last time she would open her eyes before Rudeus could comprehend the situation. It was already too late. Eris passed away at the age of 7 for Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 91. Did you know that despite being a death god, one of the seven great powers in the future, and also the strongest among Rudeus's children, Sieg was actually quite whiny and fearful in his early years. Sieg was always found sticking close to Lara, often seeking refuge behind Ars's back. Whenever Ars left him alone, Sieg would inevitably burst into tears. Despite receiving training from Alexander Kalman III, he remained somewhat scared of others. This proves that even the death god had his tender beginning. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 92 Did you know that even in his final moments, Rudeus remained steadfast in his faith? 
Witnesses reported seeing a triangular shaped object in his pocket, and that object happened to be the divine relic he faithfully held on tow until the end of his life. This compelling evidence indicates that Rudius was a devoted man, committed to his religious beliefs. In conclusion, Rudius's unwavering faith in the divine dispels any notion that he was an atheist, and the divine object he held was none other than Roxy's pants, showcasing Rudius's unyielding devotion to his Roxy religion till the very end. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 93. Did you know that upon graduating from Asura Academy, Christina unveiled her determination to assist Ariel in reshaping Asura Nation for a brighter future? Despite harboring a lifelong dream of residing in Asura, her time at the school exposed harsh realities. Her initial fondness for the nation proved to be a delusion, as she uncovered widespread corruption and a scarcity of genuinely virtuous individuals. However, amid these challenges, Christina encountered numerous hard-working individuals striving to improve the country, including including Her Majesty Ariel. This realization fueled Christina's desire to stay and contribute as a civil official, expressing her intention to work under Luke. Chris's resolute determination struck a chord with Rudius, reminiscent of someone from his past resourceful, efficient, and driven by strong ambitions. Unfortunately, these ambitions remained unfulfilled due to a teleportation incident. Notably, Christina bears a striking resemblance to that person, none other than her grandfather, Philip Boreas Grarit. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 94. Did you know that Lara is the last of Rudius's children to leave the house? When they inquired about her sudden departure, Lara refused to explain, simply stating that she would lose. Rudius was confused. Roxy then explained the possibility of Lara's actions. It seemed Lara's recent foresight influenced her decision to embark on a distant adventure. Lara confirmed this, explaining that she wanted to conduct experiments and search for a place. With a high mana concentration, she promised that she would return with a boy, unfortunately. Unfortunately, by that time, Rudius and Eris would have already passed away. Rudius understood the situation and allowed Lara to leave before she embarked. Her parents gave her some of their belongings for her adventure, including Rudius's robe. Together with Leo, she became the last child to leave the nest. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 95. Did you know that Orsted always provides Rudius with useful items? Whenever he travels on a mission, Orsted advises Rudius on what to use, what to bring, and what to wear, ensuring everything is helpful for him. It seems like Orsted can pull anything out of his pocket, making Rudius wonder if Orsted is secretly a robot cat from the 22nd century, a reference to the show called Doraemon where a robot cat can pull any bizarre objects from his pocket, even though Orsted's face is intimidating and doesn't resemble those friendly robot cats at all. His pocket is truly as useful as that of the robot cat from the 22nd century. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 96. Did you know that after Galfarian is killed by Eris, Gino doesn't seem to give a shit? when he is visited by Rudius, Orsted, Eris, and Alexander in the Holy Land of Swords with the hope of forming an alliance. Gino shows no remorse or anger towards them. In response, his current disciple at the Sword God Dojo rages at him for not avenging the previous Sword God, even though the murderer stands before him. Gino then scolds them and declares himself as the new Sword God, asserting that he has no obligation to avenge the previous Sword God. His desire to wield the sword stems solely from the intent to protect those he loves. As long as he can make out with his cousin, nothing else matters. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 97. Did you know that? Before serving as the Knight of the Dragon King Kingdom, Randolph the Death God ran a restaurant that he had taken over from a relative. Despite being skilled with a sword, one of his hobbies was cooking. Unfortunately, he was a sh chef, making it nearly impossible to have customers in his restaurant. One day, while Rudius, along with Rudyard and Eris, was still on a journey home, they decided to stop by Randolph's restaurant and order something. Initially excited about finding rice in the restaurant, Rudius's enthusiasm quickly turned to disappointment. The food resembling fried chicken proved less than appetizing, with the skin reeking of oil and the meat having a foul gamey taste. Rudius became upset, because he was supposed to have rice with the shit. In frustration, Rudius unleashed his inner Gordon Ramsay on Randolph, criticizing the food so harshly that Rudyard and Eris had to drag him out of the restaurant. Rudius's scathing remarks broke Randolph's heart, leading him to the decision to close his restaurant. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 98. 
Did you know that, in his final moments, Rudius was surrounded by a diverse group of people in his room. They all gathered around Rudius's bed, silently witnessing his last moments, standing by his side. Sophie reassured Rudius with calming words. Despite the comforting presence, Rudius struggled to recognize most of the individuals, until finally, the one who looked the same as ever approached him. Standing beside Sophie, Rudius quickly addressed her as Sensei. Tears welled up in her eyes, and the person was none other than Roxy. However, Rudius sensed the absence of a few individuals, particularly Eris and some of his children. When he inquired about Eris, they explained that she had already departed, waiting for him elsewhere. Although he wondered about his children, he understood that they had chosen their own pots. Orsted then approached Rudius, and they exchanged a brief conversation in one of his dreams. Rudius revealed that they had somehow managed to seal Hitogami. Urging Orsted to turn that dream into reality, Orsted thanked Rudius for all his hard work, adding that now Rudius could finally rest in peace. Rudius gazed at Sylphie, Roxy, and the girl who looked like Eris, before eventually losing consciousness and closing his eyes. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 99. Did you know that when Rudius is gone, Hitogami would make his descendants turn against each other. During their final farewell conversation in the Void World, Hitogami asserted that with Rudius gone, he was now free to act as he pleased. He vowed to dismantle all of Rudius's hard work, distorting the truth and inciting conflict among his descendants. Hitogami declared, that Rudius could no longer prevent his own descendants from killing each other. He would manipulate and control their fates, leading them to turn against one another. After hearing enraged words from Hitogami, Rudius simply scratched his head because it itched. Seeing Rudius so calm enraged Hitogami even more, prompting him to ask why he was so calm about his statement. Rudius simply replied, because I'm dead. Fun fact about Mashoku Tensei Part 100. Did you know that despite everything, Rudius is happy with his end? His life wasn't perfect and he encountered tough times, but he feels a sense of fulfillment, especially when he thinks about his past. In his old life, he was jobless, felt pathetic, and was lonely. Now that he has everything he wanted, a loving family and achievements, Rudius remains satisfied. Although concerns persist, such as Hidogami posing a threat to his descendants, Rudius harbors no regrets. He trusts in his descendants' ability to navigate whatever challenges come their way. And even when there's something he thinks he should do better, he at least didn't end up like his alternative self. Rudius is even thankful for Hitogami's influence in his life. Despite viewing him as an enemy, he couldn't bring himself to hate him. He acknowledges that without Hitogami's guidance, perhaps he wouldn't be living as well as he is now. Rudius found peace in his end, surrounded by those who loved him. Whether he goes to the afterlife, fades away, is reborn, or returns to his old world, he doesn't mind. Rudius is already satisfied and has no desire to repeat the journey.